401k, insurance, student loans, mortgage, car payments. Oh, that's your car? Anyway, the list goes on and on. You see, it all comes down to money. We all use it, some more than others. And just when we think we have enough, we always want more. But what does the Bible say about your money? The Bible can help maximize your satisfaction, freedom, feelings of security, your future, and all without maxing your credit. Church, how we doing? Make some noise. Let me hear you out there. Come on, you awake? All right, all right. So good to see you guys in the house of God this morning. Uh, man, it has been a phenomenal first service. I'm not going to lie to you. First service, the spirit and the presence of God was all over this room. Like, if you miss it in the second service, it's probably because it's your fault, okay? Like, God is active. He's moving. He has something to say, and I'm super fired up about it. But I want to kind of open up like this and say, there's some of you guys that are brand new to church world and uh, you're kind of coming in, you're trying to figure this out and you're like, do I fit here? Am I welcomed? Is this a place that I could call home? Do I belong? And I want to start off first and foremost by saying the answer is yes to all of those questions. All right. You fit here. You're welcome here. We're so glad you chose to worship God with us today uh, and, and that, that you're here. I mean, it, it's an honor that we get to do life with you today. And, uh, and I'm telling you, you fit here. And here's how I know that, because really truthfully behind the curtain here, all of us are just really broken people, and God is on a mission to put us all back together again, okay? We all have this enemy that wants to steal, kill, and destroy, and we have a God that said, I love these people so much that I did go to that cross, and I did give my body, and I did shed my blood for the payment of sin, and sin was the problem. Sin is the thing that holds us in bondage. It's the thing that, that destroys our life, that hurts us. Every time we run to sin, instead of running to our Savior, it always causes us mega, mega issues. And that's the stuff in life that's so messy. Those are the decisions that we made that weren't right. And those sinful decisions, Jesus said, I went to the cross to pay the price for all of that. That needed to be forgiven. That needed to be removed. And now that it's removed, I can have a relationship with these people that I so desperately love. You say, how do I know God loves me? Well, man, dude, he went to the cross and, and spread his arms out like this to show you he loves you. All right, he said, listen, I'm dying on this cross, and if, if you were the only person in the entire world that needed their sin forgiven, I would have still went to the cross just for you. You matter to God, and I also want you to know that at this church, you matter to us. We're glad that you're here. So this is a great place to be. To kind of give you a little breakdown uh, on what this church is about, if you're kind of checking us out and you're new, there's four things we do here at this church. We help people know God. Okay, and we do that through our weekend services. We want you to know who God is, and we want you to know what God's word says so we can live the life he's called us to live, right? So we help people know God. Then we help people find freedom because we all come into, listen, some of y'all found it, all right? So listen, at the end of the day, we know that your life was full of mess and garbage and junk and stressful. Some of you guys, you're still under the bondage and the slavery of anxiety and fear and worry and discouragement. Some of you, it's the, it's the bondage of depression and, and you can't get out of it and it's junk. And we've been in this message series we're gonna get to in just a second um, about finding financial freedom. That's been your junk. You got these areas of your life that although you've come to church and maybe you've heard that you need to know God, you've prayed a prayer Yes, God has forgiven you. There's still these other areas of your life that need to get worked out. All the junk and all the baggage that you're bringing into the church world with you, we've got to do a work on all that. We've got to see some transformation happen in, in your life. And so the way we do that at this church is through our rev groups. And our rev groups, they meet weekly. And, and what's cool is this. We have people say, you're only open one day a week. No, dude. Church... Corporate worship is on Sunday mornings and we have three different services options to choose from. But then also we have all these groups that meet throughout the week. We have church on site here every single day. Okay, there's literally 30 different groups to choose from to start working out some of those areas that are issues for you. We've got groups on marriage because we know that some marriages are struggling. You got some baggage you're bringing in that, that really it's trying, the devil's trying to tear you apart and we want God to give you something and that's freedom, freedom from the bondage of all that icky stuff. 
Some of you guys got financial mess. Some of it's parent issues where you're trying to deal with that. Some of you guys, you got parenting issues where you're trying to deal with issues of raising your kids and you need to find some freedom in some areas. There's all these different opportunities to find freedom. And that's step two that we help you do at this church. So we want you to know God through our weekend services, know what he wants you to do, find freedom through groups, because I'm just convinced with all my heart, whether you believe me or not, I'm convinced that your pastor isn't gonna get up here and preach a message that just absolutely changed everything, okay? I wish that it was just like that. But I think life change doesn't happen in rows where I just talk at you. I think it happens in circles. I think whenever you get into a group, you get around 10 other people that are going through the same struggles that you're going through and you get into God's word and God's word begins to speak on those issues. All of a sudden we can work out some of this mess that we're in. And all of a sudden God can provide some freedom in our lives because we can learn through some people that have gone through it. And I'm telling you, that's when life change happens. So know God, find freedom. Then we got this discover purpose. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute and make a difference. We're gonna hit those two in a second. But before I move off of find freedom, if you are a rev group leader, an apprentice rev group leader, or if you have attended a group, any group out of the 30 groups over the last two weeks, I want you to stand to your feet. Rev group leader, apprentice leader, or if you just attended a group, any group, okay, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. I'm not gonna embarrass you, I'm not gonna call you out. I just wanna, I wanna pray over you. That's all I wanna do. I wanna say, God is doing something right now in your life. God is doing something in you, whether that be through leading a group or whether that be through attending a group, I know that you're on a pathway towards something. God is using you maybe to disciple somebody else, to speak into their life. And I just wanna pray a prayer of blessing over you for that. But I also wanna say for all those of you that are on the pathway to find freedom, man, I wanna pray a special prayer for you that over the next 11 weeks, as you're on this journey in these groups, that God just speak to you in a way you've never seen before. You hear something you've never heard before and he touches your heart in a way that propels you to make the changes you need to find freedom. And then for everybody else that's sitting down, that's not in a group, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the screen. You need to join a group, okay? I'm gonna put up here, here's the way you join a group. Browse through the groups right now, even as I'm praying, because listen, God wants you to find freedom as well. But I'm telling you, these guys have taken the step to go, to go get it. And I'm telling you, God's gonna bless them for it. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this place. Thank you for your Holy Spirit meeting with us this morning. God, thank you for your spirit falling on this place. God, we feel your presence here. We know that you're living and moving and active and you wanna work in our hearts and that God, we're here not by accident, that you have us here on purpose today to talk to all of us about an area of our lives that we need to, to, to make strides in, that we need to, to really uh, grow in. And God, I pray that you grow us this morning. Teach us something that we need to know. God, for every rev group leader and apprentice group leader, I pray a special prayer of blessing over them. Give them the wisdom to teach the curriculum appropriately, uh, to minister to the people that attend properly, and that God, you would just go before them even, that it wouldn't be them, because um, we know that anything good that's gonna happen is gonna come through you. So we pray that you use them and go before them to do a work in people's lives that only you can do. God, we pray that people truly find freedom. That God, there's people that are, that are taking their next step of faith to join a group. And God, I'm so grateful that they've taken that step. I pray that they be faithful to those classes every single week for the next 11 weeks, God, as they're on this journey. God, would you just break strongholds in their life? God, whatever their issue is, whatever the mess is, whatever their stress is, God, I pray that you help them to find the freedom that only you can offer. And as you do, we're gonna turn around, we're gonna thank you, we're gonna praise you, we're gonna give you all honor and glory for the work that you're doing in our lives. We pray all this in Jesus' name. We all said together, amen. Y'all can be seated, y'all can be seated. With all that being said, I wanna go ahead and roll into today, what we're doing today. Uh, we're finishing up this message series called Economy. We've been talking about maximizing the financial resources that God has given to us. And he's entrusted us with a certain amount according to our own abilities, right? And so, so he's gifted us and he's saying, hey, I'm trusting you with these resources. And, and I just believe with all my heart that as God can trust us to do the right things, that's, that's the decision maker with whether you're gonna have more or not. It really just is. And, and the reason I say that is because if he's given you little and you haven't been faithful in little, it makes no sense that he would give you more. Here, you can't be faithful in little. Why would I give you much? The scripture actually teaches the opposite. And it says, he that is faithful with little will be blessed with much. Okay. And so you go, uh, well, so it, what is God saying? Is God against me having money? And we talked in week one, this idea in Proverbs 13, it says, 
a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. So when it comes to money, he's saying a good person, they're gonna have an inheritance, not just for their kids, but for their grandkids too. Which leads me to believe when I read the scripture that God's not against us maximizing the wealth that we've been given and making more, he's not against it at all. In fact, um, you wouldn't be able to leave your kids anything and your grandkids anything if you didn't live a life uh, to build wealth, right? So God's entrusted you with some, now it's up to you to determine what you're gonna do with what he's entrusted you with. Uh, we've been working through the messes and stresses and, and we know that, that God wants us to, to get on a budget and begin to dump debt and uh, to use some of the strategies we've taught over the last few weeks to really find financial freedom. Your, your life is not to be lived paycheck to paycheck wondering how you're gonna make it. I can just tell you, God, your heavenly father loves you so much more than for you to worry every single day of your life. That was not God's intent. That was not God's plan. And let me just tell you what his plan is because it's right here in the Bible. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to do what? His plans are to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So let me just be very clear. Anything less than prospering you and a hope and a future is not of God. Right here, according to his word, it's not of God. Anything less that you've settled for, let me just tell you, it's, it's because you've gotten the way somewhere. You did something you weren't supposed to do, and maybe you dug yourself a hole, and you've been praying, you're going, God, help me out, God, help me out. And, and you go to the mail, and you get one of these little pieces of plastic in the mail, and it says, you've got credit. And you go, wow, God provided for me. He's going to dig me out of the hole by putting me more in the hole. No! That's not what he's doing, right? And so, so we bought into some lies somewhere along the way in this area of our finances. And, and we thought these people loved us so much that they were willing to let us borrow money from them because out of the goodness of their heart. But no, not out of the goodness of their heart. They hope you don't pay them back and that you just keep paying a lot of interest. Because if you borrow $500 on a credit card and you just keep paying minimum payments, you're gonna end up paying almost $1,000 to pay that $500 back if you just make the minimum payments. These people are not your friend. They don't love you like God loves you. So we think God answers prayers that way and God said, no, 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 no. That's the pathway that you went down that was wrong. That whole area of indebtedness makes you a slave to the person that's lending you the money. And I, need I remind you that Jesus died on a cross to free you from all forms of bondage, credit card companies included. You're not supposed to live that way. So he wants to give you a hope and a future. And for you to experience financial freedom, you gotta do this things God's way. Let me give you the overview of kind of where, we're been, where we've been. Uh, the big idea, and if you know it, you can say it along with me. We're to give first, we're to save second, and we're to live on the rest. We're to give first, save second, live on the rest. On the count of three, we're gonna say it all really loud and proud because we want this to get not just in our heads, but sunk into our hearts. One, two, three. Give first, save second, live on the rest. Now, this is God's plan for finances. You can have your own plan. If it's working for you, by all means, do your thing. But I'd venture to say you wouldn't be here today and you'd have a better smile on your face if it was working for you. When we do it God's way, he honors us and he blesses us because we're obedient to him. So we're to give first. Giving first honors God. Saving second builds wealth. And then living on the rest, it teaches us contentment. And let me just be flat out honest with you today. We live in one of the most prosperous areas in all the world. Just the fact that you're here today in McKinney, Texas, you are so blessed. Like, let us not forget how blessed we are. We ought to have a better attitude and spirit of thankfulness. You say, my life's a mess right now, preacher. Well, your life's a mess because you haven't been doing this thing God's way. And you've, you've for, you, you, you just forgot to look at the whole fact in the big picture that God controls all of it. He controls every detail of our lives. Well, what are you saying, preacher? I've worked hard. My blood, my sweat, my tears. I climbed my way to the top. No, 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 no. You didn't do anything to get where you're at. I know I'm being offensive today, right? Um, you didn't do anything to get where you're at because... By the grace and the love of a father up on high, your God in heaven, he's the one that put breath into your lungs and allowed you to even get up and go to work. 
So don't tell me what you did. By God's sustaining power, he put the skill in your brain to be able to use your hands and to use your feet to get up, to do your job, and to do it effectively. Don't tell me what you did. You did literally nothing, just like I did literally nothing. We do nothing. As a matter of fact, it's, it's, it, when, it's when we understand this idea that God owns it all and that God controls it all. And then when we take ourselves and we go, I'm taking myself, step way back. It's not what I'm going to do, God. You have a bigger plan, a bigger purpose, a bigger desire for my life. What is it that you have for me? When we begin to do that and look to God that way, that's whenever God can truly bless us in these areas. But you're never going to find freedom, not just financial freedom, but any freedom until you decide to take a step back and go, God, what do you want? What do you desire? Okay, we've got to learn these strategies. We give first, we save second, we live on the rest. We live on the rest that teaches us contentment. Let me just be honest. We're not content, are we? We're not content. We always have this attitude. And listen, you wake up in McKinney, Texas, one of the most affluent areas in our country, and you wake up discontent. You wake up unhappy. You wake up going, I need more, 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 more. And, it, and we've lost a spirit of thankfulness that says, man, you could have been born in a third world country with nothing, without a roof over your head. Well, it's 2019, nobody lives like that. Why don't you go to Guatemala with me next year? Why don't you go on a mission trip with me? Well, let, let's, let's talk after that. Then we can argue, okay? Um, but I'm gonna tell you, when I show you different parts of the world in 2020, right? When I show you that, then you're gonna go, wow, I didn't get it. And I'm gonna go, I know. You are so blessed. I am so blessed. Where we are, we're so blessed, but we've gotta do it God's way. Now, last week I told you I'm gonna share a simple strategy on how to avoid impulse spending and depression spending, okay? Because there's, there's, there's things that happen to us that we need to be very aware of. When it's happening, we gotta go, oh, we talked about, oh, we thought about this. We have a plan for when this happens. We're not just gonna let it happen to us. We know it's coming. We're gonna, we're gonna prepare for the train to come, right? We're not gonna stand in the middle of the road and let it hit us, okay? What am I talking about? Well, uh, me and my wife, we've shared, we're very different people. Amy, when it comes to spending, she likes to spend money all the time on little bitty stuff, like dollar items, right? She'll, she'll spend like thousands of dollars on dollar items, all right? And you're like, we don't need this. This is junk. It's gonna break when you open it, right? Like, like cheap stuff, we just don't need. It's more of a want than a, than a need. And it's like, what is she doing? And I'm the opposite. I'm a tightwad, I'm a penny pincher. You know, I don't wanna spend any money, right? I like having the money in my pocket. I don't like having it somewhere else, right? I don't like having none. So, so I, I'll save, I'm a tightwad. But at the end of the day, once about every seven years, she's laughing because she knows I'm right. About once every seven years, I will have a really bad depression spending moment where life just gets to me enough where I go, ooh, I'm so upset about something or something didn't go my way or, you know, it, just things aren't working right. And I go, I'm going, I need, I have to go spend some money. And she knows when I say that, it's like the worst nightmare come true. Because I'm not gonna go buy a little bit of little bitty things. When I say I'm gonna go spend money, it means... I wanna buy a new car. I wanna buy a brand new big TV. I need to do something to make me feel happy again right now because you know I'm just going through it. And I know that you're probably on one of those ends of the spectrum where you're like the big spender and you, when you spend, it's like a big amount of money or you're just like, no, I never spend money. You're always getting stuff on sale, but it adds up to a big amount of money. You know, and, and that's what ends up happening to you. You're on one side of that coin or the other and perhaps you do like what we do, where when you go to work and you have a really bad day, and I'm talking about those horrible, no good, very bad days where it's like you go in, you just wanna make a copy on the copy machine, the copy machine don't work, right? And then you figure out, okay, it's cause we're out of paper. So somebody goes and we have to drive to get paper. You get paper, you come back and you hit the button again, uh, toner's low, okay? So now your thing's printing all spot and you're going, what is this? And then you go back and then you come in and say, somebody did something dumb. Now we've gotta deal with this issue, you know, da 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 all this stuff. And, and then all day, you know that there's this enemy that wants to, to harm you. So he makes life extremely hard. Everything about your day just goes wrong. How many of y'all would be honest in the house, Lord, and say, man, I've experienced those days. Even recently, I've experienced those days. Come on now, this should be every hand. What's wrong with you people, all right? I'm having a bad day. These people aren't even participating, right? But at the end of the day, um, we have these issues and we have these struggles. And sometimes I would leave work and I'd, I'd call Amy and I'm like, dude, I'm just discouraged, depressed, and, and I, I'll, 
you, here's what we do. This is the mistake we make. The train's coming. We, we know it's on the track. We can hear it because it was a bad day, right? We go, I don't feel like cooking any dinner today, so let's just order a pizza because I'm tired, I'm angry, and if you talk to me wrong, I'm going to snap your head off, right? Like something bad's going to happen in here. And we know the train, you're choo, choo, you can hear it. It's close, right? You can hear it coming, and it's like, dude, I'm about to make a mistake. And what happens is we end up blowing our budget money because, remember, we've, we've come to church. We've been doing this economy. So I've got my budget out. I've got my plan. We're doing everything right. And then you have a bad day, and you go into uh, depression spending or impulse spending because you're emotional and you're tired, that's an easy way to blow the budget. How many of y'all have you seen this train come around the track a time or two, okay? Good. I thank you guys for being honest today. I'm not the only one. And uh, I'm going to give you a, a very simple strategy, and, and, and then I'm going to move into a totally different direction. We're going to turn right. And you're like, what? Listen, to, this strategy, it just works. It's so old school that you're going to go, man, we're in 2019. I can't do that. And I'm going to go, dude, if you do it, it works, okay? Because it just works, okay? And it's called the envelope system. Somebody give me an amen if you know what I'm talking about. Amen. amen. The envelope system. You're like, what is the envelope system? Well, let me, let me tell you how it works. And before I, before I pull out the envelopes, let me just kind of walk through it. I always automate the things that are the most important to me. Okay. So there's, we do live in 2019. You can automate a lot of things to make your life a lot easier to not have to worry about coming up with the money and paying the bill. You just come up with the money and set it up and it just auto takes it out of your account and it just pays it. So you don't ever have a late payment. So there are some very good advantages to where we live, but uh, we, I think we need both. I don't think we're like completely out of the envelope system and, and we can all go digital. I don't think we're there yet, okay? And if you're living there, you're probably messed up. So I'm gonna bring you back to kind of half and half. First thing I automate, because I always automate the number one things in my life. I always automate my giving. I always automate my giving. I wanna give first, remember? The whole idea that God said is that you're blessed when you're being a blessing and that he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing over your life that you won't have enough room to receive it. That's Malachi chapter three. So I want more blessing than I can receive. And God, if this is what you're saying to me, then this is what I need to do. So first thing I automate is I auto automatically automate my, my gift every month, every month. It's the very first thing. I would be doing God a disservice and putting him in a place lower than first place by having anything else paid for outside of taking care of God first because I want to honor God with my finances. So I take care and automate what's important. Second thing I automate, you probably do this too, is, is your house payment. You obviously, you know, you want a roof over your head. You go, we got to take care of that. So I want to make sure that payment gets taken care of because I don't want to get kicked out of this place. Some of y'all realize you don't pay, you get kicked out. I don't know why those people are so mean, but I, apparently they got to make money too, right? And so at the end of the day, you need that house. So we automate that. The other thing that we automate is our utilities. Because we're like, well, wait a second, we don't want the light. We want that. We like when the switch gets flipped, that the light, boop, he said, let there be light, boop, you know, it just comes on. I love that part about it. And then the water, I love like going and taking a shower and hey, the water's working day, hot and cold. That's all good stuff. Can we all agree that's good and it's important? Say yes. Yeah. That's important stuff. So we automate those areas and those areas of our life are really pretty consistent on what they're going to be. As long as you're just not leaving the house on with all your you know, water on and utilities like home alone, okay, then, then you're gonna be okay and your bill's not gonna be too different than it was the last month. So we automate those areas, but there's some other areas that definitely get us in trouble where we still need this envelope system. That without this envelope system, this is where the impulse spending and the depression spending just eats our, our, our breakfast for lunch, right? Um, that didn't even make sense, but that was awesome. Okay, so, uh, so first one is grocery money. Grocery money. So you get paid and, and you got money in your hand. Woo, this is awesome. I like getting paid. How many of y'all like getting paid? Somebody say yes. Oh, yeah. Something's wrong with you if you don't like getting paid, right? Um, by the way, people couldn't even talk because I brought all this money out and they're like, dude, look at this. I got everybody's attention. This is so cool. So, so I've got $1,000 right here, all in $100 bills. This is, un, this is a good day. Okay, I got, I, I've got money. And so we get paid and we're like, yes, I've got money. Woo, bank account looks good. And then we don't have a plan and then we lose all of our money. So we don't wanna do that. So what do we do? Well, we automated what was important and then we take a few dollars and we go, what is it our grocery bill gonna look like? Cause we budgeted and we go look at that paper and we go, ooh, 
It says right here on the Excel spreadsheet, I'm supposed to have $500 right here available. So I take my five $100 bills, and, and yours might look different, might be more, might be less. Dude, I got a big family, right? So it is what it is. Um, and I put my five $100 bills into this envelope. And what I love about this system is that it doesn't cost $500 to do this system. It costs like $2.50 to buy some envelopes and a marker. Okay, it just, it's simple, cheap. You put that in there. And then I said, hey, when I'm doing my budget, I can't just, uh, just budget all my money away towards savings and paying off debt. I need to have some fun. Because if I don't have some fun, man, it's gonna be really hard to go to work every day and think, man, this is great. I get to work my life away and I never get rewarded for anything that I do. So don't mess your budget up by not making yourself have a little bit of fun. Right, so you're gonna take some money, you're gonna have a fun envelope. And you might put $100 in there, whatever it is to you, you guys can budget that out. And you put that in that envelope, then this one. This one's the one that gets a lot of people. I say, man, you made all that money last year and you have really nothing to show for it, where did it go? And many people, they answer, they go, I ate it all. And I say, what do you mean you ate it all? And they said, eating out kicked my butt this past year. And if you looked at your budget and you've been working through this, you probably looked and realized that you're eating all your money too. And it's expensive. So what you gotta do is you gotta put in there, hey, I'm gonna put a certain X amount of dollars into this envelope so I can eat out. Now here's the trick. And there's, there's probably several more envelopes in different categories, okay? You're gonna have to come up with them all. Um, one of them might be savings or you could elect to get a totally separate account, put it in a savings account, just auto draft it, kind of a cool thing. But Come up with your envelopes, right on the front of them, and then put the money in. Now, here's the key that makes the whole thing work. Doesn't work if you don't do this. Don't bring these envelopes with you everywhere you go. If you have all your money with you at every given point in time, let me tell you what will happen. You're going to be in the grocery line, and you're going to be doop, doop, doop. And they're smiling at you. They're ringing up your groceries, and you got it all there. And, and at the end of that, you only got... 500 bucks to spend on groceries in your budget and you get it all ringed up and it's $687. And the mistake we make is we go, oh, well, I got a oh, $687. I'm embarrassed. And also, uh, I'm going to use my, my eat out money and my fun money to pay for this. And wrong. Can't do that. What you do is you just take your grocery money and you only bring this envelope with you. I know I'm not making friends, but I hope I'm influencing people, okay? Because at the end of the day, if you only bring this envelope with you, you only have $500. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to look at this little thing of groceries you got, and you go, you know, maybe I don't really need this five-gallon jar of mayonnaise that I have sitting right here, right? Five-gallon jar of mayonnaise may not be, you know, I know you always wanted it, but it may not be what you need, right? You can settle for the little cans to the five-gallon, you know, commercial jug, Okay? You got to do that. It holds you accountable. Maybe you look down and you go, you know, all these pastries I have, I don't need all these pastries. Probably not that good for me anyway. So you keep these separate. And guess what? You don't go back home and get the other envelopes to cover it. You live within your means. It holds us accountable to live with money that we have instead of money that we don't have. What a novel idea that we'll only spend the amount of money that we actually have. I'm going to let that sink in. That's a new concept for a lot of people in the room. You can only spend what you have. Let me just tell you, I'm going to tell on myself, when I go to a fast food restaurant, I'm like the worst. Dude, if we go to McDonald's, now McDonald's is supposed to be cheap, right? It's supposed to be cheap. But when I go there, here's my standard order. If we go to McDonald's, you'll see me order this. I want two McDoubles, no onion. I want a large Powerade, no ice. I want a large fry, and then I always order a 20 piece of the chicken McNuggets because it sounds so cheap because it's $5.52 for that 20 piece nugget. That's cheap. Okay, I'll do it. And then I got to get an M&M McFlurry because you have to, right? And the spoon looks cool and you don't know why it's like that. And so it's like, I have to have all this. And then what I realize is by myself alone with that food, I'll spend $16 eating at McDonald's by myself. <laughs> That's a problem. When in reality, let's talk about what I actually could have lived off of versus what I indulge in. Because I can either spend 16 bucks or I can go, you know what? Two sandwiches and a Powerade, that's probably enough. Two sandwiches. You know, there's other people in other countries that like to have 
one sandwich, but I get two. So shouldn't I live with some contentment and realize that if I have a goal and I have a plan and a desired outcome, I want my budget to work at the end, then I've got to live within my means. Because remember this, this little line, children do what feels good. Adults, though, they devise a plan and follow it. Children, they always just do what feels good. Ooh, M&M McFlurry, double M&Ms, please. I've done that, right? Like, it's just children do what feels good, but we're adulting now. Y'all remember, we're adulting now. And so since we're adulting, we have to live different than everybody else if we wanna achieve our goals. So we avoid costly mistakes. We avoid depression and impulse spending simply by carrying an envelope with us going, hey, I'm going to the grocery store today. And one more tip on the groceries. Nowadays, you can order everything online and you can actually see how much you're gonna spend before you get there. And you can just pick up your, your groceries. It's the coolest thing in the world. It's called ClickList. There's all these names for it, who knows? Look it up. Walmart has it, Kroger has it, Sam's Club has it. They all have it now. Go online and make your, make your shopping list there. Don't go in there and look around. You start looking around, you want everything. Donuts look good, ice cream looks good, cake looks good, everything looks good. You'll spend way more money doing it that way than if you just kind of create a plan and follow it. You say, okay, you've walked through this idea of <laughs> envelope system. Yes, I have. I'm getting you back on a cash-based system because these things I think are of the devil. And I think that what you should do is as soon as you can get out of debt, as fast as you can, as soon as you pay one of these dudes off, I think you just need to start cutting them up. I think they're not healthy for you. I think they're not good for you. I think they're, they're painful for you. And if you don't do this, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna be tempted to go right back to where we started. And God wanted better for you than that. So don't live like that. Cut these dudes up, because you don't need them. God's got a better plan. Well, what if I have an emergency? We've already been there and talked about that, bro. We've already talked about emergency. I'm gonna roll through just where we've been in case you missed it, because it's so important. This is the seven baby steps to financial freedom. Baby step one is you need to get $1,000 cash in a beginner emergency fund. Very first thing that you should do to get out of debt is come up with $1,000 cash as fast as possible. And the way that you're gonna do that is you're gonna do some Uber driving. You're gonna sell some stuff that you don't need, because why? One man's junk is another man's? That's right, somebody wants your junk. They think it's valuable. They'll pay top dollar for your stuff that you don't even like anymore. So get rid of that stuff, sell some stuff. And, and that way you can get a hands on $1,000. That's the beginner emergency fund. Because the goal isn't to keep, hey, where's another card at that we can swipe it on this card and that way we don't, th that's wrong, that's sinful, that's bad. That's living in bondage and Jesus came to free you from bondage. So we're not doing that anymore, we're done with that. Baby step two, you're gonna use the debt snowball to pay off all your debt but your house, okay? That means your car payment's gone, all your credit card payments gotta go, and your school loans gotta go. You gotta get rid of all that debt. How you do it? What's the debt snowball? I'm gonna very quickly speed through it. If you want it in detail, you're gonna have to go back and listen to last week's message, okay? But basically it's this. You got a $200 credit card for Amazon. You owe $20 minimum payment. You've just been paying that $20 each month. What you're gonna do is you're gonna sell so much stuff that your kids think they're next, okay? And you're gonna take the money you've raised and you're gonna pay off this $200. You're gonna find $200 more. So I really want you to save 1,200 bucks. And get your $1,000 emergency fund and then your 200. Pay off that card. Everybody pay attention. The $20 minimum payment you've been sending to them is now free. You're not having to send it to them anymore because that card's gone. You're gonna look at your next lowest card debt. We're gonna call it a Best Buy card for $400. The minimum payment on that's only 40 bucks. You've been sending them the 40 and you've been sending these guys the 20. Now that this one's gone, you're gonna take the 20 and you're gonna add it to the 40. You're gonna send $60 to these guys every month until this $400 is paid away. Once that's done, you've got $60 free. This, whatever this next one is, don't just send them $100 a month. Take this 60 and add it to it. Now you're sending them $160 until that one's paid. And you're gonna do that over and over and over and over and over again until all your credit card debt is gone. That's the debt snowball. Does that make sense? Say yes. Yeah. All right, we've been working through it and I've been giving you the same stuff over and over and over again because here's why. Our attention spans in the United States of America lasts for about 10 seconds. So I'm giving you the same info back to back to back to back. Why? Because I love you and you need it. Because I love you and you need it. So baby step two, use that debt snowball, pay off all the things but your house. 
Step three, fully funded emergency fund, three to six months of expenses. Now you go back to step one, you go, I got a thousand bucks here. You need to save somewhere between $10,000 and $18,000 to, to really live. You say, why do we need that? I don't understand that step. If you lose your job, for whatever reason, you break your leg walking out of here today and you can't move and you're immobile and you can't get to work and all of a sudden they can't pay you because you can't work. All of a sudden now you're in trouble. And what will end up happening is you'll go, please, God, send me a credit card. And we're not going back to debt, guys. It's not God's plan. So you save three to six months of full expenses. So that way you're ready for those type of things. Go to the next one. Baby step four is you're going to invest 15% of your household income into your retirement. Now, some people, when I say 15% into retirement, you freak out. You're only freaking out because you haven't done baby steps one, two, and three. If you didn't have any credit card debt, you could absolutely spend 15% into your retirement. The problem is all the debt's just caving in on you and weighing you down and harming you from, from your best life. So baby step five is start saving for your college. Saving for your college. Again, some of you guys got real young kids. Uh, you're like, oh, I got all this time. If you start saving now, it's not nearly as painful as later, okay? So you really kind of want to get on track with that. Baby step six is the fun one. You're going to pay off your home early all this extra money that you're saving not sending to a credit card not sending somewhere else you're going to be able to pay your house off early and it's going to save you years and lots of interest and you're going to have all this money once you pay that house off because the greatest wealth building tool we have to us is our own income so that's huge free up your income so that way you can do more and then the best one is is this last step baby step seven you're going to build wealth and you're going to give generously what is pastor really trying to teach us today? I want you today, today to make a decision that you're gonna live like nobody else. What does that mean? Right now, I want you to drive that same car. Drive that car until it's not drivable anymore. You don't need to upgrade, you're good. Well, when my, my people are looking at me, who cares? The Joneses aren't even that cool and the Joneses are up to their eyeballs in credit card debt. You just don't know that about the Joneses. Stop trying to keep up with them. They're a mess. You don't want what they have. They're, they're, they're freaking out, okay? We're not doing it. We're gonna wear the same clothes. Dude, I've got clothes in my closet from 12 years ago. I'm still wearing them today. I don't care what you think. Doesn't matter to me. Why? Because I'm, I'm choosing. I made a decision a long time ago. I'm gonna choose to live like nobody else right now. So that way later, I can live like nobody else. Because later when I don't have any debt and I don't have any payments and I don't even own anything on my house, guess what I'm gonna do? Anything I want. You can do all sorts of stuff. And guess what? God wants you to build that wealth, but he also wants you to realize it's not just about you. And that's where I told you, we're gonna make a right turn up in a minute and it's gonna, we're, we're at that right turn. Because perhaps God would give you a pathway of freedom and you would actually find freedom financially. But God is not done with you yet. In fact, God wanted you to learn all this so that way you could be on this pathway to find this freedom so that you can be a difference maker. Perhaps you were blessed to be a blessing. I wanna teach you how to live and give like no one else. Because at the end of the day, life isn't just about you. And I think some people, as I'm preaching, they're hearing this message, and, and I, this is why I wanted to wrap up the series with this specific thought. I'm not trying to stir up a desire in your heart for greed. If your message that you've understood from this, if that's your takeaway, you've got the wrong message. Because at the end of the day, God would want you to live in freedom so that you can do more for the world around you. And I think there's this idea in the United States of America of selfishness that needs to be addressed. I think that we only think about what we want. We only think about our selfish desires. And I want the, the word of God to speak to our hearts just for a few minutes as we close this whole thing down. Let God speak to you. And let me even say it this way. If you've liked what you've just heard up to this point, that was all God. Anything you didn't like, that was me. Okay? What we're gonna do over the next few minutes is we're just gonna let God speak. Let his word penetrate our minds, our hearts, and let it change us. Hear what his word says. Hebrews 13 says this, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. 
for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. It pleases and honors the Lord when we give of what God's blessed us with. Philippians 2, in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Church, in other words, it's not about you. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. I like to say it like this. If Christians aren't gonna be concerned for the hurting, helpless, and hopeless, well, man, who will be? I, I, I don't know you well enough yet, but I hope you're not relying on the Democrats and the Republicans and the independents to take care of the hurting, the helpless, and the homeless. By the way, that wasn't even the mission that God gave to them. He gave that mission to the church. That's us. 1 John 3 says this, but if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Very difficult for us to say we love our neighbor when we don't even meet the need that we see. I don't know what we think. Well, one day when I have more, I'll do more. And God says, no, 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 I want you to do with what I've already given you. He challenges it back. And he goes, why don't, why don't you take what I've already given you and utilize it? And then watch me not just take care of you, but watch me deliver you from all that junk. Watch me let you not survive, but thrive in these areas of your life. It's a faith thing. It's a trust thing. Overall, it's an obedience thing. Proverbs chapter three says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it's in your power to act. For instance, some of you guys, you own businesses and you have employees under you. Perhaps God has blessed you with tremendous wealth, but perhaps God would tell you to turn around and maybe bless them right now with the, that abundance that he's given you. They've been faithful, they've been loyal employees, they've been good employees. You should turn and you should bless them. Perhaps you were blessed to be a blessing. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. You wanna know what's wrong with the world? Nobody lives with this stuff. We look on the news and we go, oh, this is a mess. So discouraging. I, I woke up this morning and I saw on my news feed uh, that there was another shooting right here in Dallas. Get, right here in our backyard. And I look at that and I go, what is wrong with the world? And then I go back to the idea that we don't live this stuff out. Because if we wanna make a difference in our world, then we need to be the change that we wish to see. And it starts with this stuff right here. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Our communities change when we decide to live and give like nobody else. Look at what 1 Timothy says. This is all throughout the Bible. I'm just giving you scripture. Bop, 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 bop. Here we go. As for the rich, these are the rich people. As for rich people in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches. Don't put your hope on riches, rich people. You think all your certainty comes from that? And he says, but put it on God, who richly provides us with everything we have to enjoy. Again, it was all his anyways. They are to do good, rich people, they're to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. Let me overview that and sum that one up. It's truly living when we're giving. You've never even experienced life until you've been able to do that. Most people think money will bring them fulfillment and buy them happiness, but let me just kind of close it out like this. If that was the case, then why do people like Marilyn Monroe, Robin Williams, and Nirvana's Kurt Cobain, why did they all commit suicide? Those people had wealth, they had fame, they had success, they had abundance of riches, more than you and I would ever see in our lifetime probably. They had people lining up in arenas to see them, people lining up standing for hours just to get an autograph or take a picture with them. And yet all that money, power, fame, success left them empty. There was something missing inside. That void's always gonna be God. It's always gonna be doing things God's way. And I can tell you, you can come to church every week and still fill that void because it's not a show up at church thing. 
It's a, are you living this out thing? And until you live it out, you're never gonna find freedom. Last scripture I'm gonna share with you is this one. Luke 12. Jesus said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Because life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. It's not about what you acquire. It's not about what you own. That's what the world tells you. The white picket fence, the American dream. You have to have all this and it has to look. The Bible says life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And then Jesus told them this story. The ground of a certain rich man, it yielded this abundant harvest. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? Have I have no place to store, uh, I have no place to store my crops. In other words, I, I'm so abundant. Things are going so well. I'm gaining so much crops. I just don't even have enough room for all of this. And then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns. I'm going to build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'm going to say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Mm. Verse 20. But God said to him, you fool. This very life, your, your, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who is it that's going to get what you've prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but are not rich towards God. He talks to us all throughout scripture about this area of our life. And guys, it's really one of those things that when you get it right, you live the blessed life. And let me tell you, when you get it wrong, you live the cursed life. Somebody needs to go read Malachi chapter three, start in verse 11 and just read on. It talks about blessing and cursing. And I know that's strong and I know you're like, oh, what is that? That's God's word. And don't take my word for it. I want you to go study the scriptures. Malachi chapter three, start in verse 11, just read on about how God will bless those that are obedient to him and he curses those who are not. Some of you guys have been living under the curse and it's about daggone time you got out of it. The only way out of it is to be obedient to your father. Being rich towards God. He says, this is how it will be for whoever stores up things for themselves and is not rich towards God. What does it mean to be rich towards God? I'm gonna say this and then we're gonna close out. Being rich towards God, step one is knowing God. At this church, we help people do four things. Know God, that's number one. We want you to know God, and then we want you to know what God's word says about how to live life. Because part of knowing God is knowing his word. And when you know his word, it sets you on a path to do step two, find freedom. And some of you guys, you're struggling. It's not a financial area you're struggling. You're struggling in a marital area. You're struggling with a parenting area. You're struggling in an I don't know what to do next type of area of your life. Some of you guys are struggling in an area where it's been all about you. Life has up to this point been about what you think, what you feel, what you want, what you desire. It's been very selfish. And you need to find freedom from yourself because yourself is harming you. And if you love you like you think you love you, you'll do what God wants you to do because it's the best thing for you, right? So I say all that to go, you gotta know God, you gotta find freedom. Then he's gonna say, if you wanna be rich towards me, you gotta discover how I, how I created you. And the way you do that is through our growth track. Our growth track is four consecutive Sundays and it meets all this next month. It's gonna meet every Sunday, basically. Every Sunday it meets. And, and I want you to go to the growth track. The growth track meets at 1038. It meets at the same time this service started all the way down the hall to the left. We have volunteers back there and they basically walk you through these four classes, these four steps. And in one of those steps, the big focus is discover your purpose. Why did God put you on this earth? What were you made to do? And some of you need to discover that because that's part of being rich towards God. Know God, find freedom, discover your purpose. And the last one is when you begin to make a difference. When you begin to use your life for, for something that counts, when you make your life count, because at the end of the day, let's be honest, when you were like seven and eight years old and somebody asked you, what are you gonna be when you grew up? You had great answers. And most of those answers were, you wanted to make a difference. And at some point in your life where you had that dream that you were gonna make a difference, Somewhere along the way, either you got distracted, life hit you so hard, it collided with you, and that's what happened to that dream. It died. And yet Jesus today, he says this, he says, listen, I, 
came to resurrect that thing back to life because that was a good dream and your heart was pure when you said it. And guess what? You are a difference maker. And yes, you have dug a hole, but if you'll do this my way, I'll get you out of this mess, but you gotta be obedient and you gotta do what's hard. It's not gonna be easy. You're gonna have to rein it in. You're gonna have to have some self-control. You're gonna have to have a budget. You're gonna have to have a plan and you're gonna have to let me do something in your life. And when it doesn't make sense on paper to you, if you know it's me telling you to do it, you just do it. And when we do it, the blessings begin to flow. That's how it works. It just works like that because God is our provider and he controls it all. You say, I don't know how I'll make it because on paper, the math don't work. I want to give, but I can't. Listen, you give first. You give first because it honors God. And I'm telling you, if you want anybody on your team, that's the dude to go after, okay? If, if, if there's a draft coming up and you can draft your favorite player, by golly, by all means, I hope he's your favorite player. Go after him, draft him on your team, do it his way, invest in that way and watch what God does. Listen, he ain't never failed anybody yet, he ain't gonna fail you next. You think he's gonna waste it on you and, and be a liar on you? <laughs> you test him in it and he, he'll be proved that he ain't lying to you in these areas. You give first because it honors God. Then you save second. Guys, we have to do this. Have to do this. Live like no one else so you can live like no one else. You got to start saving money. Your future matters. That's the second thing we do. Give first, save second because it builds wealth. And then we live on the rest. And that's a really great spot to be in because it teaches us contentment. And by the way, everybody look at me real quick and we'll be done. Contentment is a good lesson to go ahead and start modeling for your children. Because quite honestly, you've been discontent and selfish for way too long. And it's about time you teach your kids something of value, that they can live within their means and live a content life that they don't have to have, have, gain, gain, be, be, do, do. Man, is that really the life that you wanna teach your kids? You're tired, you're exhausted, and you're stressed out, and you're a mess, and you're modeling that, and you think that's what you want your kids to know. For the love of all things good, <laughs> Jesus, let's do it his way. And I always say this, and I always like to laugh at the end. You can always go back to doing it your way. <laughs> but I venture to say we wouldn't be here in this mess if we had done it God's way. But that being said, I want you to bow your heads close your eyes. As we get ready to get out of here, I'm gonna ask for some honesty moments because that's where we're at. We're in the house of the Lord. It's time to get honest with ourselves and be honest with our Lord. There's some of you today that you need to admit that today under the eyes of God, <laughs> that you've got a, a selfishness problem. And if you'll bring that to light and you'll bring it out and you'll say, yes, I acknowledge that, God will start working on that. You can find some freedom from that selfishness. See, if life every day is always about what you want, what you desire, what you feel, what you think, then I'd venture to say you probably have a selfishness problem. Life is all about you. God has called us to not make life just about ourselves, but to make a difference in the world around us. And if that's you, I wanna pray for breakthrough. We sang that song today, Breakthrough, and we did it on purpose because I think this is an area of our life where we need some breakthrough. If you got some selfishness issues and you want me to pray over you, just throw your hands in the air. Be honest, hands going up all over the place. You're not alone, lots of people. I'm gonna pray for you in just a second. Thank you for being honest. Really respect the honesty. Some of you, selfishness isn't the issue, it's self-control, that's the issue. You just spend and spend and spend and spend and spend and you have no self-control. One of the fruits of the spirit is self-control. When we're closer to God, we have control over our, our lives. If you have no self-control, you're gonna spiral out, out of control. And I don't want that for you, neither is God. Some of you need to admit under the eyes of the Lord and say, listen, I struggle with self-control. I'm an impulse spender, I'm a depression spender. If that's you, I'm gonna pray for you. Raise your hands dear. Be honest in the eyes of the Lord. Lots of people raising their hands again. Thank you for being honest in the house of God today. God sees your hand and he knows your heart. 
I want to pray for you right now. And I got one last thing. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these people right now. These are people uh, that have acknowledged that, God, they, they need better self-control or that they've been selfish in these areas of their life. And, and that, God, we know today through the teaching of your word that this is not what you've called us to be and this is not what you've called us to do. God, continue to train us and teach us what we need to know. God, I pray for breakthrough in this area of our life. Where we're in financial bondage, I pray for financial freedom. God, I know it can only come when we obey you to give first, to save second, to live on the rest, to do it your way. I pray that we'll trust and obey everything that you've taught us. There's one last group of people in the room today, and those are the people that are not rich towards God. You've spent a whole lifetime trying to make something of yourself and maybe you're rich according to man's standard, but according to God's standard, you're actually very poor because you don't really have a relationship with your creator. You know about him, but you don't know him really in your heart. There's such a difference between knowing about God and having him living inside of you, helping you each day of your life to make decisions that are pleasing to him. And he wants that for you. The Bible says he went to the cross to offer a relationship to you so your sin could be forgiven so that you could live a life of freedom and maybe you're here today because you need to accept God as your number one your boss your leader and your CEO if that's you right where you're seated today I want you to pray what we call a commitment prayer we're going to put the prayer on the screen I just want you to repeat these words after me and invite God to do a work in your life say dear God thank you for loving me thank you for sending Jesus for me be my Lord, be my Savior. Forgive me my sin. Forgive me for doing life my way. Show me your way. Fill me with your spirit and guide me by your word. Make me who you created me to be. Amen. Church, let's welcome people into the family of God. Come on, get loud. Woo! All right. All right. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it with all your heart, listen, two things. Number one is pull out this great communication card. I want you to fill it out. And on the bottom, it says, I made a commitment to follow Jesus today. You can fill this out, drop it in any of the black boxes on the back walls, or hand it to a volunteer at the new Here Start Here station. I want to send you some information in the mail about that prayer that you prayed and some potential next steps for you to just find freedom in your life because I want you to be rich towards God. You say, preacher, that'd be good if I got one of those cards, but I didn't get one. No big deal. Pull out your phone. Okay, this is the second thing. No big deal. Pull out your phone. If you didn't get a card, text the word, new me, one word, no space, new me to the number on the screen, 31996. New me to 31996. I'm going to electronically send you the same information uh, as I would if you did it the other way. But really, I just want to celebrate what God is doing in your life. And I want to help you find freedom. This is a journey. This is a pathway. Okay, you're getting on the right path and being on the right, right path is so important. So I wanna encourage you next Sunday, we're shifting gears. We're not talking about money anymore. We're talking about spiritually growing, spiritually connecting with our savior, connecting with our God. We're gonna start a brand new message series called Dangerous Prayers. There's some prayers that you can pray that are super dangerous. And when you pray them, they absolutely have power behind them to transform and change your life. And I so want that for you because I don't want you to just find freedom financially. I want you to spiritually come alive. And I know that that'll happen if you'll be here next week. It's a great day to invite a guest. If you know somebody's looking for a church um, or a coworker, I'm um, gonna tell you this is a, it's gonna be a good series. So uh, with that being said, thank you for being here. You guys are family. I'll see my family next week.